It's been a good time for peace after the defeat of Frieza. Goku and Vegeta have been off-world dealing with the rest of the Cold Empire and King Cold himself, while Raditz has been adjusting his father to life on Earth. Bardock is even able to meet Grandpa Gohan and thank him for all that he did in helping to raise his son, which Grandpa Gohan says was no problem and he's happy to finally meet his grandson's actual father. Bardock isn't the only one who's had to adjust to life on Earth either, as there were two survivors of the Frieza Force Massacre, that being Raccoon and Jace. Since Goku never really likes to kill his enemies, these two of the Ginyu Force managed to survive, and while the others really wanted to kill them as well to get rid of the army for good, Goku was able to vouch for them that they could become good people. These two are pretty saddened by the deaths of their squad and Frieza himself, so know that if they want to stay alive, then they better stay on these guys' good sides. Bardock and Raditz have a field day with these two, basically turning them into their own personal butlers to get back at them for everything that they did under Frieza's rule. And they occasionally spar with them too to let off some steam. All seems to be going well. That is until they get a visitor from the future with a warning. That visitor being Future Gohan. Future Gohan managed to track down his uncle and grandfather to tell them about the horrible future that befalls them due to the androids. The two are surprised to see a future version of timid little Gohan, and how extremely powerful he appears to be. A much different Gohan than the one that they've seen. Future Gohan explains to them that in the future, the evil Dr. Jiro creates two very powerful androids that instantly wipe out Manito as revenge for what he did to the Red Ribbon Army many years ago, which rendered the Dragon Balls inert. The rest of the Z Fighters attempted to stop them, but they were too powerful and all of them were killed. The only survivors were himself and another young boy that he's been training to become as powerful as himself. Due to their immense training together, he's been able to survive, but has lost an arm in the process. It seems that no matter what they do, the androids will destroy them all. So he's come back in Bulma's time machine to warn them of the threat, and that they need to train harder than ever to be prepared. Bardock and Raditz are saddened to hear this news, that even though they seem to be stronger than ever, they still all get killed by some robots made by an Earthling. How embarrassing is that? They make sure to tell Future Gohan that they'll do their best, and if there's anything else they need to know. Future Gohan hands him the heart medication to give to Goku for when he comes down with his heart disease, and that in this time too, they should really train up his younger self more, as he didn't seriously start training until everybody died, and if he gets a head start now, then that may be able to change some things some more. Future Gohan thanks them and says he'll try to come back to help in three years time, and he departs back off to the future. Bardock and Raditz pass on the news of the android attack to the other Z fighters and how they need to prepare for the incoming invasion. Everybody begins to train hard for the battle, with Bardock and Raditz taking Gohan under their wing to begin his training now as well. He hasn't ever been in a fight before since he's had no reason to, but after the two saw how powerful he could become with his future self, they know they're going to need him if they have any chance of winning against these androids. Once Goku and Vegeta return from space and killing King Cold, they are caught up on the news of the androids and begin to train together with the others to try and have a chance at survival. Now, in this time, a few things happen. First off, with Gohan being trained by his father, Raditz, and his hardened grandfather, he is able to show off his potential more and more, and even become a Super Saiyan due to all of this training way earlier than it would have originally. Even though he hasn't been in any real fights before, or had his inner power unlocked in any way, I'd say that with three immensely powerful Super Saiyans training you, that would be more than enough to make up for a lack of experience. Second pretty big change is that Bardock is there to remind Goku to take his heart virus medication. Raditz definitely would have forgotten to tell him to take it, but Bardock's not an idiot, and he knows that Goku's gonna need to be at 100% if they want to survive, which the others appreciate. We have a couple of extra people training too, with Raccoon and Jace being treated much nicer with Goku back on Earth, and actually able to participate in the training. They've warmed up quite a bit to Goku, and since he's the only Saiyan who hasn't treated them like garbage, they've gotten pretty loyal to him. Oh, and of course in this time too, Vegeta and Bulma shacked up and had baby trunks, with Bardock and Raditz being pretty confident in guessing that's the boy Gohan trained in the future. 
through these years of training, the Super Saiyans were all able to evolve their forms further too. Not anything insane like Super Saiyan 2 or anything, but into some of the graded Super Saiyan forms like Grade 2 and 3. They discovered pretty fast that Grade 3 was really powerful, but had a gigantic speed disadvantage. So, if they need to, they'll just stick with Grade 2. After these years of training, the fateful day has arrived. Bardock made sure to extra prepare too, by contacting Kami about the androids and that they're going to need his help. So, Kami has been training on Serial for the past three years too, in order to come and help. And the day before the androids are scheduled to arrive, Kami was wished to Earth by Manito's Dragon Balls, so he can be there right on time. The group all head up to the lookout to guard Manito, which is what Future Gohan said would be the androids' first strike. Of course, Future Gohan's prediction was correct, with the androids 19 and 20 coming up to the lookout to kill Manito. To their shock, it's not just the old Namekians the two encounter, as the entirety of the Z Fighters are there as well. 20 is angry that he's not going to be able to kill the old man who thwarted the Red Ribbon's rise to power all those years ago, but at least he can take out the other fighters who are here to make sure that he has no opposition in taking over the planet. Goku steps up first, eager to test these androids, with him and Android 19 getting into a heated battle. The others watch in awe as these two battle it out, with them seeming to be evenly matched. Unfortunately for our heroes, how strong they've gotten has kind of become their downfall, since Jiro has been recording their data ever since the fall of the Red Ribbon all those years ago. He's been able to record the fight with Raditz, Vegeta and Nappa, the Ginyu Force, and even the battle with Frieza, and Vegeta's Super Saiyan form. With all of this data he's gathered, he managed to increase the powers of the androids way more than they were in canon. So, even with all the amazing training they've gone through in these years, somebody like Android 19 is now evenly matched with a full power Super Saiyan Goku. A plus that Goku has this time is that he's already taken his heart medication, so he can continue the battle all he wants. But with Android 19's absorbing hands, he's not going to be able to keep this up all day. Raditz goes in to help his brother, with 20 standing in his way, not allowing him to go in. Raditz erupts into his Super Saiyan form to battle Jiro, with the two getting in a heated battle of their own. Bardock runs in to help Goku, with Kami and the others going to help Raditz against 20. With everybody working together, they're able to push the androids back, which Jiro isn't too happy about. If they're able to fight them one-on-one, -on -one, then this would be a curb stomp, but all of the warriors being prepared for a fight isn't something he calculated on, and he's gonna need to get out of here with 19 and think of another plan. Unfortunately for him, he can't blindsight them and escape into the rocks due to him being way too high up on Kami's lookout. With all of these strong warriors here, it doesn't seem that escape will be very easy. He can try to absorb anybody's energy that he can get his hands on, but there's always somebody else to get him off, so that's not gonna work. Jiro is insanely angry, as he's not supposed to lose. He has all of their data, he should be able to escape. He can't die here. However, he is gonna die here. With everybody working together to push the androids back, they have absolutely no chance of escape. And with everybody pushing, both Android 19 and 20 are destroyed completely. The group celebrate on the androids' defeat, as even though it wasn't an easy fight, they managed to defeat the androids Gohan warned them about. And now, the future is saved. Goku says that those guys put up a great fight, a lot better than even Frieza did, but he knows that he couldn't spare these ones, as they were just way too dangerous and even destroyed his son's future. They're not like Raccoon and Jace, they were pure evil. So, even though he's disappointed that he couldn't fight them longer, he's glad that they're gone so that the future is saved. Speaking of the future, future Gohan arrives at the lookout, seeing everybody looking pretty much perfectly fine. He asks if the androids ever showed up, with them explaining that they indeed did, and with them all working together, they managed to defeat them both. Future Gohan is amazed that they were able to deal with them so easily. Him and Trunks have been fighting them for years, and no matter what, their androids were just way too powerful, and they just destroyed them in their first encounter? His father, grandfather, and uncle really are amazing. 
Goku is happy to meet his future son, and without meaning any offense, asks him how he hasn't been able to beat those guys. Since they were powerful, but with all the training he's gone through and the use of the time chamber, he should have been able to at least do something to them. Future Gohan tells him he's not sure about any time chamber, but no amount of regular training with Trunks has put him on their level at all. Goku then realizes that if he died to a heart virus and the others were killed early, then nobody would have had a chance to tell Gohan about the time chamber. So that's a crucial bit of information he should know about. Goku offers to take Gohan into the time chamber to try and get him powered up enough to defeat his androids himself, which future Gohan is all down for. The other Z fighters disband now that the threat is gone, and Kami heads back off to Serial with Manito's Dragon Ball since he's no longer needed. Things seem to be back to normal now, and hopefully once future Gohan comes out of the time chamber with Goku, he'll be strong enough to defeat the androids of his future. Unbeknownst to our heroes though, there has been a threat lurking in the shadows this entire time. The creature known as Cell. Cell has gone around draining villages of their people to get himself strong enough, and once he's gotten enough power, he heads off to Jiro's lab to search for the other androids. The androids that Jiro was never able to reawaken due to his death. The true androids of Gohan's future, androids 17 and 18. With them still asleep in their pods, Cell is able to absorb the both of them with no opposition whatsoever, and he erupts into his perfect form, Perfect Cell. The birth of Perfect Cell shakes the planet, with our Z fighters sensing his horrifying presence, a power that is way above any of theirs. With Cell having achieved his perfect form earlier, do our heroes have a chance at survival? Well, make sure you tune into the next part to find out. Hope you all enjoyed the Android Saga in this scenario, and are looking forward to how Cell is going to be dealt with. If you want to see the next part faster, then let's see if we can get this video to 300 likes. And so if we can hit that, then I'll be sure to get to work on the next episode faster for you guys. And before I go, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of my amazing patrons. In the official patron tier, we have Nathan, BBB, Bossmaker, and Michelle Willems. In the moving up in the world tier, we have Patrick Sandlin, John Lister, Sinshenrod92, Oakwood Tree, Monal, Blake Foyer, Matthew Garcia, Vegito Gaming72, True Lightning Striker, Joseph Calvin Liu, Semroth, Dreadpool, and The Boy Swaggy. In the VIP patron tier, we have Always Zero and Levin726. And finally, in the God tier, we have Tony Kage, Tails Homie 99, and Caleb Gotcha FNAF. Thank you, especially you three. You guys are absolute gods. And thank all of you so much for watching, and until we meet again. See you later.